Welcome to the 21st edition, edition of the Panama interview series, where we discuss topics regarding foreign direct investment in Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, we're streaming live from the capital city of the Republic of Panama. Uh, the Panama interview series is produced by Beco Legal and Compliance Consulting LLC, a Miami domiciled limited liability corporation with offices in downtown Miami and Panama City, Panama. We provide international commercial and transactional legal and regulatory compliance advice and related services to manufacturers and brand owners that seek to boost profit and hedge domestic risk through international distribution in the United States of America and in Latin America and the Caribbean. My name is Anthony Robinson and I'm the managing member of Beagle Legal and Compliance Consulting. Um, in the last few and in the next several editions of the Panama interview series, uh, we have and we will discuss the future of probiotics in Latin America and the Caribbean and the potential of probiotics to contribute to the post-COVID economic recovery of the region. Digestive health and probiotics is one of the most dynamic sectors in the global health and wellness market. And Latin America is poised to be one of the fastest growing regions of the world for the consumption of probiotic and digestive health products. But probiotics are just a part of a larger picture concerning bacteria and our bodies or our microbiome. Uh, the microbiome is a diverse community of organisms and microbes that work together to keep our bodies healthy. Uh, we have trillions of microbes on and in our bodies, which are a combination of bacteria, fungi, viruses, and protozoa. More than a decade ago, Little was known about the myriad of microorganisms that live happily inside and on our bodies. Now, researchers believe that a better understanding of the microbiome could have changed the future of human health. To help us understand the promise of microbiome research and development, we are honored to have as our guest today, Dr. Amin Sorghani, a microbiome expert and author of the soon to be released audio book, the Microbiome Mavericks, how these startups are rewriting the rules of medicine and health. Uh, Dr. Amin Zorghani has a decade of experience in microbiome research and development and is on a mission to prevent the extinction of the human microbiome. Uh, Dr. Zorghani has a PhD in life sciences from the University of Tours in France and a postdoc from the Max Planck Institute in Würzburg, Germany. Uh, Dr. Zerbani's research has been published in peer-reviewed journals, and he has served as an associate editor of the prestigious Frontiers Journal. Also, Dr. Zerbani is advising the European Commission on the Microbiome World Program and the Human Microbiome Action. We have several topics to cover in 60 minutes. Accordingly, please put your questions in the chat, and I will submit them to our guest Afterwards, let's jump in. Dr. Zogani, how are you doing? Good morning or good afternoon for you. Good night for you almost. How are you? Yes, yes uh, good night. Yeah, we are here uh, live from Brussels. Thank you so much, Tony, for um, this invitation, for organizing this, and for the nice introduction as well. Very pleased to be here today. Thank you. My, our pleasure. Uh, please tell us about your background. Um, I, you know, I, I didn't do it justice. Uh, you're a very accomplished uh, uh, professional. And um, tell us about the work uh, that you were doing to advance the cause of microbiome research and development. Thank you so much. Um, my background, I would describe it in, a, in a three, three different levels. Uh, I started by, um, with, well, how to say, loving bacteria and then hating bacteria and then loving them again. Uh, I will explain why that is the, the case. I actually started my studies in Algeria. That's where I come from. Um, for those who doesn't know, Algeria is one of the biggest countries uh, in in Africa and also one of the biggest countries producing uh, oil and petrol. And one of the biggest problems that uh, petroleum uh, pipelines have is that some bacteria would colonize the pipelines of petrol and create these biofilms and you know, kind of making this corrosion. And what we found that some of those bacteria, when we studied them, some of them, they became actually producing 
some uh, proteins which are highly, highly resistant to salt, for instance. We call them the halophilic bacteria. They're more of archaea. They're not really bacteria, they're archaea. And that's what I started loving bacteria. So my background is an engineer by training. I started literally understanding how bacteria can populate, uh, can grow in a fermenter, and how can you take them from just one small tube into thousands and thousands of liters to create value out of that. That was one of my engineering studies. When I moved to France in Europe and I started doing a PhD, my goal was there, obviously, not to hate bacteria, it's just a metaphor, is there are some bacteria that today, uh, due to the increased usage of antibiotics, they become highly resistant to those antibiotics. And until we find ourselves having just one line of antibiotics that can actually kill those bacteria. And here I'm speaking about bacteria that uh, infect women in their latest months of pregnancy, uh, Streptococcus agalactae, which are resistant to only, uh, so, sorry, sensitive to only one antibiotic, colistin, and they actually became more resistant to that in, in, the, in the, the, the duration of the pregnancy and as well with the increase of usage of antibiotics. So my job was there to understand how we can look into the DNA of this bacteria and out of that create kind of a novel generation of antibiotics to fight those infections. And we found that, that there are some pieces of DNA, we call them small non-coding RNAs. They actually, it's an RNA that doesn't code to a protein. We have DNA, protein, sorry, DNA, RNA, and protein. And we found that there are some pieces of DNA in this specific bacteria that they don't give you any proteins. They just, they're like RNAs and that's it. But they are important into increasing the sensitivity for cholestine, which is this last line antibiotic. So that's why I hated the bacteria. It didn't mean I hated them. I actually wanted to find solution to you know help those women because in France alone, there are at least a thousand uh, neonates infected with this deadly uh, bacteria. Mm -hmm. But for the first two months of my studies, uh, of my PhD, that's um, yeah early 2013, my supervisor, who's uh, basically a gynecologist, he came and to my desk and brought a book. And I even told him when I started working on my audio book, The Microbiome Mavericks, uh, and he brought a book, and in that book was written probiotic and prebiotic. And I told him, hmm, what is this? He said, listen, this is the future of health and medicine, or medicine and health, and he said it. That's why actually in the audiobook title, there is the future of medicine and health, because it's actually I'm quoting what my supervisor said in 2013. And he said, listen, this is the future of medicine and health, and you need to read it. So I said, but I don't work in probiotics nor prebiotics. I'm working more of antibiotic, which is literally the opposite. I'm trying to kill bacteria, but he's bringing me a book about making bacteria alive and making them helpful to humans. Uh, and that's what I really read that book and dig deeper into what impact in the overuse of antibiotics, for instance, can have on our gut microbiome or our skin for skin infection and so on. And that's where I started not loving bacteria, but really it was, I made it my mission to preserve this ecosystem that we cannot see with our eyes, but the impact on our life is just tremendous. You cannot imagine how important is this little tiny microbe that you cannot see and your health in general, as well on the health of your planet, mm -hmm. your dogs, your animals, your plants, your earth, and so on. And that's what that's my mission about microbiome. So I've been working in the microbiome field around 10 years now, and I have seen very interesting stuff. Uh, very interesting stuff that sometimes you just need an idea, you can bring it to actual product. That's what I did with my uh, company um, in here in, in Belgium. It was just an idea, and then we actually made a product out of it uh, from start to end, literally from the idea to the actual probiotic in the cosmetic product that people actually tested it and use it. And there are some ideas which you can actually, that are more long term, that you can see them, the implications of that are more difficult, more different. Yeah, that's a little bit of my journey, but as you could see, is literally 15 years or more than 15 years in microbiology in general, around 10 years in microbiome. And I've led several teams and I worked with several institutions, lived in more or less seven countries, more or less in Europe. I haven't crossed the, the ocean yet, so that's my probably next stop soon. <laughs>
Why, why is, uh, and this might take more time than we have, but why is the microbiome uh, at risk of extinction? Honestly, I would not take the, the, the let's say, the, the same. I, I, I said it, no. A lot of people said it before me. And one of them, uh, Martin Blazer, for instance, with his book, Missing Microbes, and also with his uh, late, uh, latest documentary, uh, uh, The Invisible Extension. It is drastically uh, reduced through time. I mean, we know that the microbiomes, the human microbiomes with an S uh, from 100 years ago is different than the one we have today. It's almost 50% difference. It's like not the same one. Why? Several reasons. Number one, as I said, the overuse of antibiotics. Like for some countries, for instance, developed countries, antibiotics are very restricted use. You can only get them by prescription. But for most of developing countries, you can actually get them out of the counter. So you just go, you buy antibiotics, here you go. So the more you use antibiotics, you kill your good bacteria and bad bacteria. And when people don't stick to the what the doctor says, if the doctor tells you, you take them for seven days and you just take them for six days, that just one day that you didn't take them, some of those bacteria, they, they become more resistant to that same antibiotic. So next time when you take them, it doesn't work. So you have to take another antibiotic, kill more bacteria, and here you go. Second, uh, processed food. All of those processed food that we use or ultra processed food, they're filled with some chemicals. I'm not going to say uh, don't eat processed food anymore. Maybe just regulate it. Don't eat that much of it. Uh, processed food, and indeed, which uh, influence our the composition of, my, of microbiome. And again, this is not just me saying. That's the science. Several research papers saying that. There is the environment, the pollution. So we are exposed to pollution day in and day out. One day I was in a, in a conference in the Microbiome Connect in the Netherlands, and one of the people said, ha, huh, your product is good, which was like a probiotic that you apply on the skin. He said, perfect, very nice idea, and we see the potential and so on, but should we take it every day or should we stop after a month or so on? I said, yes, you can stop, but if you promise me that you will never ever go outside again, simply because outside is a lot of pollution, so and pollution will kill those skin bacteria, uh, if you tell me that I will actually never smoke or sit beside somebody smoking because smoke actually kills some skin bacteria and so on and so forth. So because you can never promise me that and for very interesting commercial reasons, it is good for the business if you take it, you know, for your life. Uh, and that's basically it. So what I'm saying is the people said, yeah, prevention is better or maybe let's just tackle pollution and maybe save the planet and so on. Yes, a lot of people are trying to do that. And thank you. For those people who are trying to do that but to tell me that tomorrow we'll have zero pollution on earth it is just okay a joke maybe it's just impossible you cannot achieve that so if you cannot achieve that you have to find solutions until probably you manage to do that to to kind of polish or to add value into that microbiome and this is just three main reasons pollution antibiotics and processed food just from you know, top line, but there are many others. Uh, but if you want to counter that, you got to start by prevention, reducing the, that three things that you're doing. And more importantly, try to incorporate things that will, how to say, uh, prevent or populate your microbiome to make it make it healthier. If we're speaking about food, if you're, you know, take you, you took a lot of processed food or whatever, maybe just try to complement with a lot of veggies, the rainbow, you know, having this colorful, uh, fruits and vegetables that will improve it uh, and so on. So there are, we know what's the status. We do know actually how to prevent it. We do know even how to actually populate the good microbes in people's health and as well at their animals on their and earth and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, you're, you're clearly a, a maverick in the uh, context and in this area of, of science. And um, it's not a surprise that your book is fascinating because you're talking to your peers who are also microbiome mavericks. So, um, you know, we'd like to say congratulations on your book. Um, it, it's, uh, I had the opportunity to listen to it in preparation for this and it was fascinating. When is it, when will it be released? Yeah, the book, so the audiobook is actually already released um, okay. and you can find it already on 3wmicrobiomaverick.com. 
as well, if you just search Microbiome Mavericks on Spotify or Audible or um, Google Podcast, you can see it. And don't forget to follow because uh, we'll be soon releasing episodes of the podcast. This was the audiobook, but we'll be releasing on uh, the Microbiome Maverick podcast simply because I had a lot of interest. Um, just after we now, it's been released after just a month, and we have more than almost a thousand uh, kind of plays uh, with zero advertisement. Uh, plus, we have around 200 followers of the podcast on Spotify uh, and other platforms, which is great. So, I thought you gave me an advanced copy. I felt I felt special for it. But... <laughs> <You are. laughs> um, well, it, the book was fascinating to me, not just because of the science, but you, you did a, a, a wonderful job of intertwining the technical aspects of the contributions that each uh, scientist is making uh, to microbiome research and development with their professional journey as a scientist and entrepreneur, right? I mean, they're all involved in some sort of a, a startup, um, uh, you know, whether it's they may be businesses that have been around for a while, but they're on the fringes and cutting edges of, of, of this science. Okay. And, um, and that was really something that I'd say it's a page turner, but it's an audio book, but it kept me really uh, engrossed because it, it was, uh, very personal to to the individual scientists. So what I would like to do is introduce each one of them. There are 14 of them, correct? Yeah. And um, because each one of them deserves an hour, right? I think each of, each chapter was about an hour, right? 50, 45, yes. 50 minutes. And then I'd like to delve into six of them um, because we don't have time to go through all of them. Mm -hmm. So. Um, let's just, um, you can introduce us to each one of these and just quickly tell, tell us who they are and, and who their company is and, and, you know, real quickly, how, like, how did you come to include them in your, in your project? Sure. So totally. totally. Uh, Joseph Borgo, Professor Joseph Cyborg, he's, uh, he's, uh, one of the people with whom I actually uh, collaborated in the past, um, uh, on some projects and that's where I actually got to, uh, to know him. And I got to know him simply because he's one of the unique or, or the, one of the only people who've managed to send skin microbiome samples to space or to the space station, the ISS. Um, and he's dedicated to that. He's really uh, an inspiration on how to actually take um, a very complex science uh, into some very, I call it entertaining, but also um, some very uh, thought provoking and more of a vision. So he's looking into really like 20 years or 30 years from now when people start going to space and space will be something, you know, normal uh, with all the, the SpaceX and all the, uh, the rest of people that are trying to kind of go to the moon and beyond. And uh, the work he's doing is just trying how uh, skin bacteria or from this food ulcers can actually survive uh, or what they can do in space. Uh, would they become more resistant to antibiotics or would they be more sensitive? Because food ulcers, uh, bacteria, they, they are a little bit dangerous uh, for some people and they can lead to kind of serious issues. And that's what he did. Uh, and I obviously I, I come across his profile simply, as I said, from a collaboration we've worked together. Very fascinating. What about Marie Drago? Yeah, she's in the same space as I am. Uh, skin microbiome, I've, I've um, seen and uh, collaborated with Marie in uh, several conferences. Um, she, she's she's very interesting in terms of uh, a person who actually managed to get into a, a domain of the microbiome. Because she is a, um, a pharmacist. She's not a, a scientist. And she actually managed to crack down how you can take um, a very complex science to an actual product and convince the consumer uh, about that product. And more importantly, that the product actually works. So Galinet is uh, now a, a part of Shiseido, uh, this gigantic uh, cosmetic company in uh, Japan. And uh, Marie Dago did what a lot of people did not manage to do, is actually get people interested into the skin microbiome. Because it's one thing to say, we are creating a new products that will help your microbiome, uh, gut or skin, or oral, vaginal, whatsoever. That's one thing, uh, but it's another thing to actually get the people use it and keep using it. And Hi, that, uh, I'm Dr. Marie Drago, founder of Galinet. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the microbiome, what it is, and how it inspired me to create Galinet. The world's first beauty line specifically designed to care for the good bacteria of your microbiome. 
In 2013, a massive piece of research was conducted called the Human Microbiome Project. It showed that 50% of the cells of your body are bacteria. This protective layer of happy bacteria is called the microbiome. It is an integral part of the barrier function of your skin. When the microbiome becomes damaged or unbalanced, skin becomes hypersensitive and inflamed. That's probably why up to 80% of people say they have sensitive skin. At Galinée, our products harness and protect the good bacteria that live on your skin microbiome. We provide them with a unique cocktail of prebiotics, probiotics and postbiotics that nurture and nourish them. Galinée helps your bacteria to retain and rebuild the protective barrier. This unique approach is kind to all skin, even the most sensitive ones, and make your microbiome a happy place to be. At Galinée, our products care for your bacteria as they care for you. Okay, very nice. So we're going to uh, try to keep going in the interest of time. So Elsa, Jean, yes. right, right, yeah. Elsa is uh, so for the microbiome there the skin microbiome there are number one is creating this product and people can use and apply in their skin to improve their skin barrier function to you know to, to tackle some uh, skin issues uh, Elsa she has also created a brand and I also got to know Elsa from you know this common interest in the microbiome and we've been in conferences together actually never been in a conference with Elsa but we just got to know each other from uh, that, that space and what Elsa did now is currently doing, creating this um, this Hello Biome, uh, this um, skin microbiome uh, testing. She's one of the, the first ones actually to work on that, uh, using artificial intelligence and trying to look into how skin bacteria change with from dry skin to oily skin to um, to the different types of skins uh, and colors. And <coughs> Personalize the probiotics that people can use afterwards, or this uh, topical application that people can use, and that's what she's doing currently. And it's very interesting uh, because it's very new domain. We do know on the gut microbiome testing that is kind of very popular, but the skin microbiome testing is not that much. And she's one of the unique ones actually doing it today. So very nice. And Jonathan Sheeman, correct? Sheeman. Yes, Jonathan Sheeman is uh, also again. You know, uh, the, the way I selected these people is just because. Each one of them represents a unique domain and a unique um, feature. And what's unique about what uh, Jonathan and Fitbiomics is doing is that they are one of, actually one of the only ones looking into the athlete's gut microbiome. So we take these uh, allied athletes as the fittest people on, on earth, or at least from a performance perspective. And what they are doing is trying to understand in their gut microbiome what are these bacteria that makes them as performant as they are and try to isolate those bacteria. Some of the bacteria that are isolated and they're now commercializing is Veronella and shows to, to improve the strength and the performance of uh, athletes. But when you use them as if you are not an athlete, it can also give you some strength and performance and improving that. And uh, that's what he's doing. And they have published actually in Nature Medicine and one of the papers they did about how uh, this gut bacteria from specific athletes can increase the metabolism and uh, increase the performance of, uh, of people in a clinical uh, trial. So it's very unique and it's very inspired from what uh, light athletes are. And some and they have actually some ambassadors of athletes, uh, some US Olympic athletes they're working with, which is, in my uh, opinion, um, impressive. Okay, I've got... Uh... So he's got uh, he's got a product uh, consumer package good that he's uh, totally. marketing. Okay, Thomas the Wooters. Yeah, Thomas. Uh, he's is a completely different uh, topic. Um, Thomas worked with uh, one of the microbiome mavericks, is uh, Joël Doré, and he had uh, done his PhD in France, and and uh, he's now um, the, the CEO of uh, PharmaBiome. What Pharma the PharmaBiome is doing is they're trying to find a consortia of bacteria that can be used to treat some uh, gut diseases or gut issues. Uh, what we do know today that are uh, with the recent approval of the FMT, for instance, with feeding pharmaceuticals and 
as well recently to serious therapeutics, this fecal microbiota transplantation where we take stools from patients, uh, from healthy volunteers, and we give them to patients with Clostridium difficile infections. That's It's called a donor-dependent intervention. So we actually need the person to give you the stool, uh, which you need to check that's, you know, good stool uh, that you can transmit to somebody else to cure uh, diseases, C. diff in this case. However, this is donor dependent. So you always have to have that kind of patient to give you those stools. What PharmaBiome is trying to do is to get away from that donor dependency. So to get just find uh, the specific consortia of bacteria that work together, which enable to do the same thing, but you don't have to rely on the donor, which is excellent because if you want to scale uh, the donor dependency it's not scalable because the more treatment you need the more people you need to donate their stool while if you want to make this global uh, this approach is also scalable and that's what we're trying to do there's a lot of very complex science they're doing actually to so to be able to find the consortia when i say consortia is imagine you have trillions of microbes or let's say a thousand just to say say number in your guts so you want to find the, the, the 20 or the 30 specific bacteria that you want to select because they have, when they work together, they kind of promote health. And that's what you want to do. And that's what they're trying to do. So it's uh, there is a lot of complex uh, science behind it. But if I would say it in small, easy words, find a cocktail of bacteria that can promote health and cure disease. Okay. Sinead Jones. Jeanette von Jones is um, she's a, a smart, talented um, um, scientist. Uh, she's uh, Bobby Byam is uh, based in the UK. It's very young company. It's actually a women-led company because there are three uh, women founders. And then she and Jeanette told me that when I interviewed her, actually the interview happened in the UK in London when we were in the microbiome movement um, uh, drug development conference. And she was actually my first victim because she was the first one I interviewed. So, uh, and she was very nice on that. And what they're trying to do is something that also goes without saying that a lot of people are not aware of it, uh, that they're trying to isolate or to quantify or identify bacteria from breast milk. So what happens is there are some women, they cannot breastfeed. And when they don't breastfeed, they give a uh, formula to their kids. And we found that after, you know, babies grows and so on, some formula fed babies, they have different gut microbiome composition than uh, breastfed babies because the breastfed babies, they get all the microbes from their mothers. And what we didn't know, and people actually still think that it's, um, it's not possible, that the breast milk contain specific microbes. We don't know how those microbes get to the breast milk, but they do. So the breast milk is not sterile. It contains microbes. And uh, what we also found, the science recently found that we do know that uh, babies that are born uh, through vaginal delivery, which is the, the, the natural delivery, they have a different microbiome, gut microbiome, than the babies which are with C-section. Okay. However, we found that um, after just a few months of breastfeeding, the C-section babies get similar microbiome as the natural delivery babies because the breast milk itself contains the microbes that will enable to replenish what the C-section took away. Because the C-section, obviously, you don't get all those microbes that are in the vaginal area. So booby biome is now identifying bacteria from breast milk that can be hopefully in the future formulated, that can be added to the baby's formula milk to enable kind of giving those bacteria that some babies which cannot be breastfed to get that and uh, kind of populate it. Fascinating. Got this on. Uh... It's bacteria. Mm. Let me see if I started We over. think it's incredible that breast milk is thriving with bacteria that no one knows much about. It is thought that these bacteria are critical for developing the immune system and for offsetting disease. But many mothers struggle to breastfeed, with recent statistics showing that only 1% of UK babies are breastfed for the duration that's recommended. This means many babies lose out on this beneficial bacteria that's critical during the first stages of life. At Booby Biome, using breast milk as our guide, we are developing a product for babies without access to breast milk. 
We've been really busy visiting loads of new mums and some very cute babies, collecting breast milk donations. From this, we've been able to develop a really detailed database containing information on all of the different bacteria present in milk and also built a culture collection containing some of these very interesting different bacterial strains. We're so excited to be working with CPI, who have world-leading facilities and a really great team to help enable us to produce products to achieve our vision. Fascinating. Yes. Uh... Rajan Singha. Yeah, Rajan Singha he has uh, actually a personal story. I mean, he only started this company. He's, uh, you know, he's a C-suite person and he had worked in uh, Amazon, I think Apple as well uh, in the past. And he had founded several companies. But he mentioned when I was talking to him that uh, Digby Health is, um, is a personal story because he was suffering personally and he could not uh, eat a lot of things. And he wanted to okay, find a solution from himself uh, first and really started from him and try to find, okay, what's, what's I can do? What impacts my health uh, in, a, in a, let's say, in kind of connection? And he found that combining genetics and microbiome data can actually unlock things that no medicine can do. Simply because our microbiome change with what we eat, with what we do, with our style of, are we more of an exercising person or more of sitting, not doing anything? Are we uh, eating more outside? Are we eating more vegetables and food and so on and so forth? That impacts our microbiome. But our genetics is something within our DNA. So we, the, the DNA is something that you cannot just do like this and change it. So what the Digby Health is trying to do, or is actually doing, because they are very successful and they have they have a product on the market today, which is a digital platform, which can actually look into your genetics plus your microbiome, and then tailor uh, more of a nutritional uh, approach to improve your digestive health issues. And they have gotten a very very mm -hmm. successful um, client base uh, in the US mainly. And I think they're expanding throughout um, throughout the, the rest of the world. And they are doing a lot of collaborations as well uh, in the field, which I, in my opinion, is also one of the, the, the very interesting approach how to take, again, complex science to straight to the consumer. Because a lot of people say today, yeah, the microbiome is a hype and, you know, as the artificial intelligence is a hype and at some point it will go down. But everything is proving the contrary. Artificial intelligence is not a hype. I mean, to, just like a few months ago, there's this chat GPT making a revolution in our health and you know, and, and our uh, digital information and so on. Uh, we could have literally had this interview planned and written and, you know, and directed by chat GPT at some point in the future. Who knows? But the microbiome, we also know that a lot of application today is happening. We do see the proof. People's lives are changing. Some people uh, were on the verge of dying because just no medication worked for them. Uh, and I do say this simply because we should not forget the fact that our microbiomes are a live piece of our body. We are microbiomes. We are not humans, actually, when you think about it. We are 99 or 98% microbes the rest is just cells so if we are more microbes than we are humans shouldn't we just take care of that and more importantly shouldn't we find solutions today rather than tomorrow and find applications what digby health is doing is finding applications and consumer needs that and consumer are buying that so yeah i've got this on uh, clinical uh, signals mm -hmm. Let's start it over Introducing Digby Health, the first and only digital care program that analyzes your gut microbiome, genes, meals, and clinical signals. Digby delivers tailored, holistic care plans for weight loss and inflammatory illnesses. Digby pairs you with a personal coach, provides an app with remote monitoring to identify and treat the root cause of your chronic illnesses, and ultimately utilizes food as medicine. 
Because every person has a different gut microbiome and unique genetics, recommending the same diet and treatment for everyone is not effective. Individual genetic and microbiome testing allows us to understand the current state of your gut and your unique genetics to identify small changes to your meals and lifestyle, and if needed, even prebiotics. This helps you address the root cause of weight gain, inflammation, diabetes, mental and digestive disorders. It is well accepted in the medical and scientific community that the gut and brain are connected. Communication between the two is constantly occurring. An unhealthy gut is now associated with depression, sleep, and anxiety disorders. Once you're enrolled, we will ship you an at-home DNA and gut microbiome test kit and connect you to your personal coach. You'll also be invited to our vibrant support community of thousands of Digby members. It's a safe, private, non-judgmental community of people living with similar health challenges as yours and who have successfully addressed it with Digby. Are you ready to understand your body's blueprint, reverse your illness, and live your best life? Digby. You know, when I when I look at that, just to take a, 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 a pause for a comment, it seems mm -hmm. um, very aspirational because they're they're promoting something that's very personal and trying to make it applicable to everyone, right? Okay. So if it's something that is 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 individual in in its efficacy, yeah, um, how do you roll it out to everybody in a format where you can just uh, where it's almost off the shelf? It seems contradictory. Yeah, no, indeed. Um, but that's literally that's because your genetics and your microbiome are unique. Uh, so at the mem at the point when you crack that down, the minute we can understand, OK, what's your genetics? What's your microbiome? And the fact they have this database is not just um, one patient or uh, or two. They have the database and the artificial intelligence that enables them to more of tailor the diet. Um, so and that's what's unique about it. And again, today, this is, uh, in my opinion, one of the powerful things that any company can do. Leverage what's good about every domain. So here we do know what's good about the microbiome and how we can understand it. And we know how we can use artificial intelligence to empower and more of a boost that. So combining the two makes a unique product. Um, and yes, I think it, and it, it, it looks like contradictory, but it is working. So. No, I mean, it seems like uh, it's something that's revolutionary if, if, mm -hmm. if, it, if it's true to what it uh, says it is. I mean, the other uh, um, thought that came to mind was something that resonated in, in your book, it, one of your comments, which was, you know, these, these uh, microbiome solutions to health issues or concerns are not quick fixes, you know, it's like mm -hmm. they, they take time. And it's not um, a pharmaceutical that you can just, you know, pop a pill and see a direct result. It, 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 and that is not, uh, I think that the undertone of the Big V Health uh, offering is almost like a traditional pharmaceutical situation where you, you're going to see an immediate result. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe I'm reading something into it, but I think, that, I think that's an important point. Yeah, no, so the... The, the truth is uh, modulating your microbiome. I mean, if you, if tomorrow you would start taking, I don't know, burgers like for a for a full day, uh, your microbiome may start a little bit changing, but it will go back to its normal status just a few few months after, a uh, few few days afterwards. Uh, what what's um, what's challenging is when your microbiome is, um, let's say, damaged for years because of whatever issue you had. Trying to change that and trying to say to, that you have any solution that will make a quick fix like this, that's a myth. It's not possible because it will take time. You cannot just do like this and it will change. But combining different solutions, not just probiotics, prebiotics, or uh, fermented foods, or, uh, or you know, a, a holistic approach like diet, nutrition, and so on and so forth, that could literally how to say, shorten the time that you will take to a better result. Let's say we do know today what are the different elements that can improve your health. 
we do know that exercising is good for microbiome. Uh, yoga is good. Meditation is good. Uh, we do know that uh, f- fruits and vegetables, uh, fermented food, probiotics, prebiotics, and so on and so forth. So combining all that for somebody will be overwhelming. Because uh, listen, today, if you want to change it and fast track it, you have to do all of this all at once. Here you go. And it will, you know, it will work quickly. No one will do that simply because it's just overwhelming. If somebody has never exercised in their life and they just never did yoga and they just hate eating vegetables and all that stuff. So you want to do, you want to look into their DNA and their microbiome from all what you've seen from everybody else in your database, for instance, what are the quick changes that might fast track their uh, health impact uh, and improve like somebody i mean uh, what what uh, ranjan said in his um, in the audio book he said he, he could not eat butter for instance and he just eat this like veggie butter whatever he called it and now he, he does eat that simply because he he knows how to tweak his genetics or well, not tweak them but at least go around as well as what to combine with from a food perspective and how the microbiome is responding to that so it's not it's not a quick fix still, but again, it is just combining things. And I think, in my opinion, it's it's just a matter of people understanding how what works better for them. But more importantly, how we can today use the science that we have to just make the fixes that can people actually accept. If someone is not taking whatever the changes they need to do in their lives as a habit, so if it doesn't make me become a habit, it will be forgotten. We only right. keep doing habits. We don't do anything else, you know? We just do habits in our lives. And anything you do, it needs to become more or less a habit. A diet should become a habit. Uh, exercising should become a habit, and so on and so forth. And that, I think, in my opinion, will be more of a long-term success for anything we do, including health. Okay. Uh, yeah. Virginia Franco. Yes, Virginia Franco is, um, I choose her simply because uh, she's one of the unique as well, working in the vaginal microbiome, uh, an area that is in a femtech that is not as much spoken about. She's actually a gynecologist. She sees uh, women uh, with uh, vaginal issues and and, um, women health issues. And what she's trying to do as well with her uh, company, Yoni Solutions uh, in uh, Switzerland, is to tailor... Uh, probiotics for uh, women's health and vaginal uh, issues based on uh, microbiome testing. So also do some vaginal testing just to understand what's the composition of the microbiota in the vaginal uh, tract. And then afterwards propose some personalized probiotics that can improve uh, women's health. And she's more into this uh, assisted um, fertilization as well, because we know that for the success of uh, fertilization, assisted fertilization for people who cannot actually get uh, babies naturally. They, they need to ass- assisted fertilization. The success of that appears to be linked to the composition of the vaginal microbiota, which is actually very interesting. It's not yet uh, cracked down uh, yet, but I think a lot of work is still to be done. And she's doing great success there, so in the area of vaginal microbiome. Uh, Thomas Saranso. Thomas Lorenzo is working on more of, uh, I would say, if um, I think they're uh, they're going to release their clinical trial results soon, uh, and I'm very curious to see what they're doing, simply because all the studies we've done today about the gut microbiome, they're stool-based. So we literally uh, get the stool of people, and then we analyze the, their microbiome composition. Like, what are the bacteria in the stool afterwards, really? But what we know is that the microbiome, uh, or it is the gut microbiota, these bacteria, they're located into a little bit upper than actual where the stool comes from uh, in the intestine. And so, and what comes into the stool is probably not exactly 100% what is in the intestine. So what will be interesting is to actually go into the intestine itself um, and the digestive tract and collect bacteria from there. And that's exactly what... Um, Pelican Health is doing, going into uh, created a, this medical device that can collect bacteria from the small intestine, and then we can analyze to see what's what's going on in there. Okay. Nina, we not. 
I mean, uh, for those who who, um, who are into the microbiome space, Nina, you know, is not uh, to be introduced. She's she's a, she's a microbiome maverick as well, and uh, she's very very active on LinkedIn. She has her uh, microbial newsletter where she actually goes through microbiome books mm-hmm. and microbiome conferences, and she shares that. Um, she had worked in the probiotics business for for years, and now currently working with Targetis, is a French company which are doing uh, what we call pre-biomics. Um, uh, and pre-biomics is basically is a, a sort of probiotics. They're targeting specific health issues. And one of the things they're working on, and which is um, more of a mechanistic, like probiotic is just big word. So b- people think that probiotic is just a pill. You take it and it just do magic. Uh, but what they're doing with um, target is having this d- very specific bacteria, probiotic, prebiomics, as they call them, which can tackle specific uh, health issues. And one of them is uh, obesity. And they showed that their probiotic specifically can uh, work very nicely for people suffering from obesity and reducing their, uh, increasing their weight loss. And they're also working on another probiotic in uh, mental health and increasing, um, hopefully, happiness for everybody. And uh, prebiomics, is that different than precision biotics? Uh, so Prisci uh, so is the thing is more of a trademark name they, they use, okay. uh, but it's more of, yes, indeed, it's more of precision probiotics. Okay. Yeah. Um, Rudy Schmidt. Rudy is um, a LinkedIn friend. So we actually met um, on LinkedIn um, because we have common interest in microbiome. And he's, a, he's an influencer in the field of... Uh, uh, of immunology, and he uh, got to know also um, microbiome from an immunology perspective. And he, he blogs a lot about microbiome, uh, as well as immunology and its link to the microbiome. And actually, um, I got to, to discuss several times with, with Rudy about the topic, how real-world data influence what with decisions we can make from a science perspective on the application. So, and he, that's exactly what he did. He, he had worked with uh, one of uh, the largest hospitals in uh, Germany and actually one of the second largest hospitals in Europe uh, where he was collecting a lot of real world data. Because today, if you want to influence people's health, it is very important that you get the real world data. Like just magically imagining numbers and small clinical trials wouldn't really help. But what actually helps in creating new innovative solutions is to see What's happening? What's happening in the real world, and uh, applying that with from an immunology perspective and from a microbiome perspective, can fast track some um, some uh, therapeutics for cancer, for instance, and some immune related diseases like IBD and IBS. Uh, Ross Young's uh, his topic was it just blew my mind. It opened my mind to uh, an area that I did not know existed. Yeah, no, me, uh, me neither. Uh, until I actually met Ross Youngs, really, and uh, and to see that um, the ocean water is filled of microbes—that's something everybody knew. But to know that we can actually extract biomolecules from the that ocean in very large quantities, like they do, it is just not imaginable. But like no one could imagine that, really. And um, processing thousands of cubic meters of water to extract biomolecules. So imagine like in a cup of water, as he he used to say, how many, if you take this from an ocean, how many biomolecules you get into it and multiply this by a trillion, right? And that's the amount of biomolecules you can get and the diversity of those biomolecules. And imagine after on the top of that, because if you have tons and, and trillions of molecules, you can extract from the ocean. How can you process that? Using artificial intelligence into that, it can really fast track how we can today uh, create new medicine. And that's why I actually made the title this um, nature's pharmacy, because it is. I mean, that's nature, really. I mean, you can look into how some animals live longer or uh, like um, some sea um, uh sea animals or whatever you call them um i got the, the it didn't uh, I, I lost the name of the the, the sea uh, it's not the dolphins it's this 
the, what is the biggest uh, sea um, fish? I forgot the name. Apologies. But anyway, <laughs> there, are, there are some sea fish that they live too long, right? I mean, there is a reason why that. So all, so all animals, they live longer than we do as a human. We should focus on that and understand why, actually. Just, just random basic question. Why right. do these animals live longer than we do? Really, they have something. And looking into the ocean can unlock with something that human beings never seen before. And that's what they're doing. But it's very large scale biomolecule um, pharmacy. The disconnect for me was that, uh, you know, the microbiome is on us or in us as human beings. And the ocean, we, it's it, microbes that are exogenous to us. So what's the connection? I mean, it, you know, the good bacteria and the bad bacteria that, that live with us mm -hmm. is, is fundamentally different than what's in the, in the ocean, right? I agree. So basically, bacteria in the ocean definitely are different than the one we have uh, here on us or in us, as you said. But what you can unlock from that is uh, don't forget that you do eat fish, right? And you do eat seaweed uh, for some part of the planet. So it doesn't mean that if you don't have them in us, they will not get in us. I mean, you probably have already um, knew that uh, some population, they eat seaweed. Uh, for instance, which is one of their main, I think in Japan, their main uh, sort of uh, iodine, uh, their gut microbiota is quite different than the rest of the population. And tomorrow, if you go to the Japan, and I think you live there for around like three years, around like that, your gut microbiota will be different, and you're very likely to get some seaweed microbes, um, which will be beneficial for your health. So uh, I, I don't like to mention uh, the, the, actually, I, I might stop using the word microbiome at some point and start using the word holobiome because it's more of a holobiont approach. It is just beyond us as a humans or microbes in us or on us, but it's all what's around us, uh, including the ocean and the earth. And that's why we recommend to parents, don't, mm -hmm. uh, don't, uh, don't put your kids just in a home and don't let them go outside. Let them go play with dirt. Let them get dirty sometimes, really. And let them get the, the earth microbes. And yeah, so I think it is very, very important that we know that microbes is, is not just limited to us as humans. They're just everything around us. Yeah, I have a 10-year-old and I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum. <laughs> <laughs> Can you just be a little cleaner? Um, okay, um, Per Falk. Per is one of the, the only people uh, who had worked with the father of the microbiome and the grandfather of the microbiome. Um, and he is uh, like, I mean, I, when I was speaking to him, he has actually, he started his PhD before I was actually born even. And he's currently the president of Firm Pharmaceuticals. I was very honored to have him because his schedule is almost booked uh, every time. And uh, like having him and to speak about um, their latest uh, fecal microbiota translation approval by the FDA, they had that approved last December. It was uh, one of a um, uh, thrill for every uh, person working in the microbiome industry because everybody was like doubting, I mean, is microbiome science at any time we're going to be therapeutic? Are we going to create therapy out of this at any point? And Fedem Pharmaceutical proved that that's possible, which was excellent. And they're now trying to um, market that, obviously, in the U.S., because that's what was approved. And hopefully they they, uh, they take that throughout the world. And I really wish them the best to get to doing that. And then finally, uh, Joel Doré. Joel Doré is considered as one of the key opinion leaders of microbiome uh, in Europe and especially in France. He's leading uh, the French gut microbiome project, and he's almost in every commission of uh, microbiome-related science. And he's uh, also one of the scientific directors of Mat Pharma, which is a company as well working into uh, finding fecal microbiota transplantation for treatment of some rare uh, cancer diseases. And his wealth of knowledge. I, I, I mean, if you have uh, listened to all the, the audiobook and, and his talk, you will be fascinated how um, his wealth of knowledge is, is huge in terms of understanding we as a human that are aware. I mean, he's the one who said we should team up with microbes and we should also uh, kind of try to leverage that that uh, relationship with all the microbes by taking care of them, by eating more vegetables and diversifying our food, exercising more and so on. 
And what, what he's trying to do uh, with others is take that microbiome from just a science to actual application. Okay. Fascinating. Well, the objective today um, was to raise awareness of the opportunities to improve health conditions in Latin America and the Caribbean through the application of advances in microbiome research and development, and thereby to contribute to the post-COVID economic recovery in the region. I mean, many, much of what we talked about is applicable to uh, health concerns uh, where I am in Latin America and, and the Caribbean. So this is um, a chart uh, by your monitor that shows, blow it up a little bit, um, you know, it shows the, 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 the cross-section between the, um, conditions that uh, Latin America is concerned with and um, the, the actual, you know, empirical reality of, of, of the health conditions in, in that context. So you can see in the top left is where our promise is, right, is the opportunity and so the question is, you know, based on you know what we've talked about in the last hour and the advances in microbiome research, uh, are there opportunities in Latin America and the Caribbean to apply some of that? You know, so we've got uh, a high a high incidence of uh, immune issues with frequent cold and flus, and GI problems, and uh, sleep problems. Right and, and tiredness and stress. I mean, these are and depression. Uh, these are uh, in the wheelhouse of the research that you and, and the other Mavericks are doing. No, I, I, I totally agree with you, and I really appreciate the opportunity to speak about that. And you bringing that to light from from this perspective. Um, so the, this this microbiome Mavericks I put there because their selection because I want it to be that very various and so on. But they are not the only ones. And uh, in the U.S. and the Europe, there are many other companies working in the same space and the, the different fields. And I think most of what you would you have, or at least some of what you have there, so immune-related diseases or uh, depression. So we do know that there are a lot of work still yet to be done, but there are some issues that we can already start cracking down by some tailored probiotics, some tailored prebiotics, and so on. And... Uh, I hope that some companies would move uh, to their markets into the Latin America as well from that perspective, because we do have some probiotics today that are targeting depression, for instance. Uh, we can analyze people's microbiome and understand how that is variable and what is affected, what's not affected, and up afterwards bring in solutions. They could be held, for instance, not to make advertisement, but probably their their app is also accessible in Latin America and others, right? So. What's important, I, it's just one easy, simple advice. If if you f identify yourself that having some of those issues that are there and, and others, try to find the right information. Uh, try by, you know, listening to the audiobook or listening to others or reading or researching or getting in touch as well. If you would like to get in touch, feel free to do so. Uh, and find solutions that exist today because there are some solutions today uh, targeting the microbiome and people can already seek that solutions and seek that help and try to find, um, you know, quick fix if possible, which is never quick. When I say quick fix, it usually takes six months probably to see the results. So, uh, but there are some solutions available. Really important work that you're doing. Uh, you know, uh, I recommend the book uh, you know, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. My pleasure. Uh, we'll be following you, uh, you know, from Panama and hopefully we'll have an opportunity to talk to you again because, uh, we didn't even really scratch, uh, you know, a quarter of what I wanted to talk to you about. I mean, there's just <laughs> a lot of rich and interesting, uh, information that you had to offer. So Dr. Sergani, thank you so much. Thank you. Good you and, uh, be safe. On your travel. Thank you so much, Tony. Really, I appreciate the opportunity. Thanks. Okay. Take care. Take care.